Hi everyone, I'm Belinda Winter from Cooper Grace Ward Lawyers and I'm a partner in the Workplace Relations and Safety team. We're going to roll out a short series for employers, HR professionals and managers of people on topics that we find that we are most asked about from our clients. Each week I'm going to be talking about a different topic. So I'm very keen to hear from you about what types of topics that you'd like us to talk about. Today I want to talk to you about how an employer protects itself from unfair dismissal. So importantly, for the purposes of unfair dismissal, an employee has access to that if they earn less than $142,000 a year plus super and have been employed for the minimum qualifying period in your business. For small businesses, that's 12 months, and for other businesses, that's six months. What often happens with our clients is that when they make a decision to terminate someone's employment, they have a very valid reason for doing that. So there has been some employee misconduct, some ongoing performance issues or behaviour issues. What we do find though is our clients don't get the process right. And often we are defending our clients because of this. So I just wanted to let you know, what do you need to do in terms of a process? The first thing you need to do is identify the performance issue early and talk to the employee about this. You can't expect an employee to know that they're underperforming unless you spell it out for them. Similarly with conduct, you need to be very specific with your employees if they are behaving in a manner that you don't find is appropriate for your business. Once you, once you approach the employee about this um, issue, it's best to record it, even if it is a informal counselling session. So take some notes after the discussion. If you're not seeing any improvement, it's time now to have some more formal discussions and perhaps some formal written warnings. This is important because the employee needs to know that things are getting very serious. And unless they do improve their performance or their behaviour, their employment could be in jeopardy. You don't need to give people three warnings before making a decision. The number of warnings will depend on what the conduct is. If you have decided that the employee's performance or conduct has not sufficiently improved after some coaching and some warnings, it's now time to invite them to perhaps show cause why their employment shouldn't be terminated. And this is a meeting in a formal process where you let the employee know that you form the preliminary view that their employment is going to be terminated, but before you make that decision, you'd like to hear from them first. And this is their opportunity to tell you something that's going on in their life that might be impacting them, such as a family um, issue or an illness, and gives you an opportunity to consider any of those sort of mitigating circumstances. Once you've had the opportunity to consider the employee's response to a show cause, you're now in the position to decide whether to terminate their employment or not. And if the decision is to go ahead and terminate, you need to communicate to that employee that that's the decision and you need to provide that in writing. Now, if you've got any concerns about that process, it's always a good idea to stop, get some legal advice, before you make the termination decision, because once you've made the termination decision, the next time you'll find yourself in a commission and having to get legal advice in that context. And that's never ideal. Thanks for listening today. The next topic is going to be on how to affect employee redundancies.